Hey, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Guess where you are? Joel, where are we? I'm going to just let you tell us. We are, well, here on online, we're in Jegu Village, where we teach anyone how to travel for free. And this is our weekly Monday webinar. And Mia, where are you coming from? I'm out of Denver. Where are you coming from? I am in Mexico City right now. So much cooler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are actually living the Jegu lifestyle, which I love. So, you know, even, even traveling, Joel's able to get online and he's going to give us a lot of great information. So, yes, Jegu Village, free community where we teach anyone, and we mean anyone, the basics of how to travel anywhere in the world for free. So a ton of information here. And that's what you're going to do today. I love this about never having a travel emergency again. Yeah. And this is something that, you know, a lot of people just kind of overlook. They, they think, oh, I'm going to get in the points game and I'm going to jump right into the deep end of the pool and, you know, like travel in luxury. And then they learn that that's a lot harder than they thought. And today we're going to talk about the opposite. We're going to talk about just like having backup plans and preventing as many travel emergencies as possible. Um, you know, as we've got people joining in, you know, let's hear from people. How often have you had a case where you have a, a wedding that's specific place, specific time, flight prices are astronomical. You've got a guy's trip, a girl's trip, a funeral. You know, I mean, and sometimes Murphy's Law says funerals, you've got a family of five and tickets that should be 150 bucks or $750. Yeah. Um, so let's hear some comments. Who has had experiences like that? And, you know, would you like to talk about ways to prevent those frustrating experiences? You know, it's another one to our conferences. Yes. You know, speaking of conference, thanks for lobbing that softball. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, so for anyone who hasn't heard about our conference, we're having a weekend boot camp. Um, and I'll just share this while we're waiting for users to get on. Mia, you can keep an eye on attendance. And when when numbers get up, we can get rolling. But yeah, we've, we're having a boot camp. Um the whole idea is to get you from one level to the next of travel. We have, you know, and typically beginners typically are only getting two or three grand a year in free travel, uh, or that's ultra beginners. Jegu beginners are, are getting hopefully a minimum of 10 grand in free travel. Intermediate, you're getting 25 to 50,000 ish. And then advanced, you're getting 50,000 and above on into the healthy six figure range of free travel. So our boot camp, if you haven't heard about it, comment boot camp and we can send you a or, link. Or event. <laughs> oh, there it is. Event, comment event. And we can send you information about that. Um, and the whole idea is to get you from one level to the next. So if you're currently getting just two or three grand in free travel, we'll get you to, to you know, have the ability to have, be getting at least 10 grand in free travel per year. If you're cur currently getting 10 or 15, we'll get you to 25 to 50. Uh, so, and we'll be there also, by the way, we're pretty excited. I'll be empty. Yeah. you're going to be there. A lot of our, our J Goot experts will be there and they're here in the audience as well too. So real quick, a little bit of housekeeping as always. I see that we can't see some of your names. You can see that, but Joel and I can't. So just go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook and give it permission so that we can see your name. And then we can pop things up like this. So let's see if we've got some comments from folks, if they've had some events too. Uh, we have a Joe says go, going away on a guy's trip that I didn't know too well. I use points to go home a day sooner. <laughs> so worth it and not a bad redemption. Good one, Joe. Yeah, that's a, a get out of jail card as well, too. Yeah. So, yeah, I love that. $700 ticket for 9,000 points next day. Uh, $700 ticket for 9,000 points next day. Good for you. Destination wedding. Hey, Brooke from above uh, over Labor Day. Yeah, this is this is why we're talking about this today, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we, we hear from people daily, multiple times daily where, you know, that's just this all caps, five exclamation points, help. We can't, mm -hmm. you know, we've got a family emergency or, uh, you know, heaven forbid someone's family member dies. We hear about it all the time and mm -hmm. there's usually nothing you can do at that point. There, there are some Hail Mary plays. We'll <laughs> talk about that today too. I decided to throw that in. But uh, for the most part, if you're not prepared, you're going to pay an arm and a leg. There's no way around it. Um, or you're going to go on Greyhound. Um, mm. And no one wants to do that. So, no. uh, yeah, let's talk about let's talk about a few different ways. Should we get rolling? Absolutely. We have plenty of people here ready to roll. And so I'll just kind of start with a little preamble for those of you new to uh, our Facebook lives. 
we do things a little differently. You know, there's, there's the Jagut way and there's the way you've always done it. And I can say this because that's how I learned to travel the Jagut way. I used to travel just like everyone else, plan a trip two to three months before you go, spend days on end looking for a good deal. Every once in a while you find a good deal. Most of the time you pay through the nose and you wonder why travel is so expensive. Jagut way is a bit different. It's about having a, a solid set of principles that you follow, solid set of rules that you follow. And in doing so, you never have to have, well, you, you always have travel emergencies, but you never have to have the stress associated with weddings, funerals, guys trips, conferences, things that are typically very expensive because they're very inflexible. And you've got a few stop gaps in place that can prevent the, the expenses that usually are associated with those types of trips. So, uh, you know, why do we want to prepare for travel emergencies? The first and most obvious is they're two to three times as expensive as we were expecting. I mean, again, let's get a, a show of hands. Comment, that's me, if, uh, you know, in the last couple of years, You've had a funeral that you had to go to or a wedding that was short notice or on peak season, a peak, peak holiday, uh, guys trips, girls trips. Four out of five times, those are extremely expensive trips because you pay through the nose for airfare. We're going to talk about how to prevent some of those things. Um you know, and, and it wasn't in the budget. So this is added stress. You know, Murphy's Law says. That $700 flight that should have been $200 that you got to pay for four people to get there, you know, and then you get there and hotels are expensive too. Why? Murphy's Law. So, you know, having, being prepared for this reduces that stress. Um, it's kind of like Dave Ramsey's emergency fund, you know, like Dave Ramsey, for those of you who don't know, is a fin financial guru, teaches people to get out of debt, live cash-free lifestyles. I don't agree with his philosophy on credit cards, obviously, but you know he does have some very sound principles. And one of them is establish emergency and an emergency fund. And the emergency fund is, quite frankly, have a thousand bucks in the bank that's sitting in the bank. It's not invested. It's not at risk of going up, way up or way down, but it's there for those unexpected expenses. And some of the things we're going to talk about today are the exact same thing. That way, when those things happen, you don't stress it. And then finally, you know, this is the, the thing that we hear most often. Most people don't really plan for vacations. They don't have a set aside budget. And if they do, emergencies like this usually wipe that budget out. So you may have been planning on taking a big trip next summer, but then heaven forbid, Aunt Sally dies and you're all of a sudden using up that entire budget to go pay your respects to Aunt Sally. Um, and the second of the three strategies we're going to talk about today, eliminate that concern. Um, so uh, since most of you are repeat watchers and you know that the Jagut way is quite different than others, we're going to lob a little softball for you. We'll have a fun little drawing. And the first person who can tell us Take a stab at what the first two strategies have to do with can in a, win a hundred dollar travel savings card. Um, by the way, while we're waiting for that answer, um, this is a photo from a couple of our clients who have these strategies in place. Uh, this, I believe, is Eric and Libby, as I can tell by the matching tattoo marital bands. Um, oh, and is they that what started that is? I love if it. You see, if you see people mention Shufi, that is credited to Eric. Eric posts Shufis wherever they travel, and lots of our members have started to do the same. Um, and this is them in Bali. Um, sadly, Michelle and I didn't get to go there. We went to Bali uh, a couple, few years ago, and we did not get to go here, mostly because we were so wiped out, we just couldn't do it. We needed a day off to just chill at the pool. And of course, you know, we had a nice uh, swim out pool, uh, ocean view and all that. 
So it wasn't that big of a loss, but we didn't get to go there. But Eric and Libby did, and that's who that picture is of. Um, and all, I believe all the pictures today are just some little inspirational photos from members. Okay. So can you tell me, I can't see the screen. Um, have we seen answers uh, yet? Tell you what, here's stuff. what we have. Has somebody just commented about your mustache? I just pulled that up for you. Ah. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. have look every day and uh, have points to cover fits if needed. We have credit card selection and stacking points. Hold on. We've got F uh, fly where the <laughs> deals are. Um, hold on. Uh, search every day for good flights and go where the deals are. Have a stash of points. Uh, Dawn says check daily for deals and get points and reserve to use your hotel air. And as always, we need to wait for Brooke from above to tell us the person who is the first one to answer. So right. jump in there while we have all these definitely, answers popping up. I definitely saw and I heard answers in there. What we were looking for was the first two. Rule one and rule two. We want both of those. Rule one There's helps one. with preparing for travel emergencies. Rule two especially helps with preparing for travel emergencies. Um, and then Hail Mary plays. Everyone, I mean, if you don't have points, you have no choice but to do Hail Mary plays. If you're not applying rule one and you're not planning vacations around screaming deals, well, then you also know, have no choice to, but to do Hail Mary plays. But let's talk about these from a specific standpoint of how rule one of the Jagut way of travel and how rule two of the Jagut way of travel can prepare you to have a lot less stress during those unexpected travel emergencies, whether they're weddings, funerals, guys trips, girls trips, or annual vacations. Most people plan their annual vacation pretty much like a travel emergency. They wait to plan it till, you know, one to three months before a trip. They think three months is long in advance and they probably pay three to five times more than they could have paid if they just applied rule one. Um, Real quick, Mike Wiley, you are the winner. He commented, fly where the deals are and have points in reserve. So you want a dollar travel savings card and Brooke will get in touch with you regarding how to get that redemption. And, th and that's the key here. Like those two rules are meant to kind of dovetail together. Uh, they're meant to complement each other. The more you look every day, the more screaming deals you find that are such good deals, you'd be stupid to waste your points. The more you let those points build up, the more you let your points build up, you, the less you run the risk of dipping into that initial emergency stash of points, which is what we're going to talk about today. Not necessarily just flying in first class with points because that's fun, but that's kind of an advanced strategy that you build up to. Let um, me uh, put this comment. Thank you, Shannon. Shannon is one of our uh, travel experts as well, too, or she's one of our bookers as well. For a non-emergency point of view, rule number one sets you up for rule number two. You'll have a big stash of points by looking every day and going where the deals are. Thank you, Shannon. Yeah. And I, you know, I think this is really important, too. Like, does rule one prevent travel emergencies? No. You, you're not going like the odds of you looking every day and finding a flight where the planets align perfectly to go to Aunt Sally's funeral. And I do apologize. I'm sure that there is someone out there that has an Aunt Sally who has died. Um, pure coincidence. And I am sorry for your loss. Throw, yeah, throw um, out names. Right. Um, but what it does do is, you know, and, and you might be thinking like that doesn't have anything to do with a travel emergency. But the key is it has everything to do with preventing them. Why? Because instead of spending $10,000 on that vacation on just flights and hotels, uh, you, you plan a deal, you plan a vacation around a deal and you spend two grand. So that's 8,000 that you get to use towards better vacations, more vacations, a reserve for travel emergencies or whatever. Um, and this is not just cash. Go where the deals are. Right. Plan vacations around good points deals. And that's why I included this picture. Um, this is a picture of Michelle, of me um, while Michelle and I were flying to Greece. Uh, we paid $180 for a business class flight. Um, of course, we used points, but... We planned that vacation around the deal. It was a, it was 90,000 points. So that's $900 worth of points that we used to get ourselves a 6,000. No, Greece was a $5,000 round 
round trip flight. So we planned around a deal. We didn't have to use an astronomical amount of points. And again, by looking for the deals and seeing them and saying, well, that looks good. That's a week after we send my daughter off to college. Let's go celebrate being empty nesters in Greece. You know, we I think I had to readjust a dentist appointment and and we we're off to the races. So rule one doesn't have to be about looking every day for cash deals. It can, it's also when you see a great points deal, see if you can find dates that work for you and plan around it. And not only do you get to preserve your points and stretch them three to five times farther, literally, it's not anywhere near as work. It, it's not any, anywhere as much work near as much work. Thank you, Mia. <laughs> um, because you see the deal. And you don't have to spend days on end trying to, you know, find the best 1%. You just plan trips around the best 1%. Um, and that's a good so, look for you there, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. Chris, yeah. This would be a good look for us too. Christopher Palmetto is tuning in. I, that's, that is definitely the way. And you know what I love too? Time is money. So you're not spending all that time trying to find that too, right? Yeah. And that's a, a lot. This is one of those mindset things. So if you haven't read our book, we spend an entire ch chapter talking about the mindsets. The Jegu way of travel could be a one page infographic. The reason we have a 125 page book is to get past all of the objections that all of us have from the way we always travel. Um, and if we just let go of those, if we just follow rule one, even though your mind is saying, yeah, but I'm not planning any trips right now. That's the whole point. Like let the, let the deals you find inspire your trip. Um, and I'm telling you, you will spend 50 to 90% less on flights and hotels by doing just that one thing. Um, so rule one, go where the deals are. Doesn't have to have to do directly with travel emergencies, but it does have to do with preventing them. How? By saving your cash, spending 50 to 90% less, and by saving your points, by spending 50 to 90% less points. So you get to stretch them that much farther. Um, so comment book, and we'll send you a link to that. Even I bought the book, Joel. <laughs> and I work with y'all. Thank you very much. <laughs> yep. You know, and we're, we're very proud of it. For those of you watching, you know, there's only, there are a lot of moving parts to traveling this way and spending consistently spending 50 to 90% less on flights and hotels. And these one hour lessons show little parts of the whole, the big picture. The book is the big picture. So if anybody else has read it, can you comment and just say like, what did you like about the book? How has it helped? Um, so well, we do have a comment, great book, which I love too. And let me pull this up too. And I'm not sure this is try to hail Mary play back in January for a funeral, but it didn't work that well. I need more practice. I'm just kind of a newbie still. I, we appreciate that comment. It's, it is practice, yeah. right? Well, and that's the very definition of hail Mary plays. They don't always work. They're desperation plays that you only do when you have no other choice. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, if we have time, we can even do a demo. Somebody says, bought the book, but also want the audio. Well, it's coming, right? Yeah, the audio is available. Um, okay. You can, I don't know how to add it after the fact, but um, you, could, you could repurchase it and we could refund you the initial book purchase. It's worth it. Let's listen yeah. to Joel talk to you for however long it takes to read a 125 <laughs> page book, right? <laughs> Apparently it's about four hours. Okay. Yeah. That's a lot of Joel. I like it. <laughs> um, and, and in the book, step 10 is actually wash, rinse and repeat. This isn't something that you just read and instantly get to travel like a millionaire. These are things that you build on, that you get a little bit better on. Sometimes you get better at steps two and four. Other times you get better at steps five and seven. Um, and, you know, the idea is that you can read the book, implement some stuff, read another chapter, implement some more stuff, and then go back and repeat it. And the audiobook helps you do that because you can kind of listen when you're driving to work or going on vacation or whatever. I love our experts that keep popping in with these great summaries. Hail Mary does not guarantee you will find a deal. It just guarantees you have explored every option to improve your costs. Katie always nails it, doesn't she? Yep. <laughs> 
Yeah. And the whole idea is, you know, you, you, you're implementing several different tools from several different approaches that drastically increase your odds of success. Do they work every time? No. But what I like to look at it is, I mean, our, our flights here to Mexico City are, or, well, I'm flying back next week to Phoenix. And that's an example of, I didn't get a great deal. But when you, like, when you travel the traditional way, you get a great deal probably, and, and feel free to chime in if you agree with this, you probably get a great deal one in five times. The other four in five times, you pay a pretty m- mediocre rate, if not a bad rate. When you travel the Jay Goot way, I think it's fair to say that four out of five of your trips will be a phenomenal deal and one out of five won't. Um, and you don't have to sweat it because you're saving 80% of the time instead of just 20% of the time, just by implementing these two rules. So rule two is th- this is what really, this is your get out of jail free card. And I have done this so many times. In fact, Technically, I've done it twice in the last month where I just used points because it was way more economical than using cash. Um, And this is kind of a sub bullet of rule two. Rule two is always have a stash of flexible points. And um, you want to start with a goal of 25,000 points per person. Is that going to bail you out if you have a family of, of six? Well, I mean, if it's a good start. If you have 150,000 points, that's going to really mitigate the damage when you're looking at those astronomical flights. And you can use points as a get-out-of-jail-free card. Now, we that's kind of your starting point because you can't just run out and collect. If you have a family of six, you can't run out and instantly collect 150,000 points. Um, we talk about how to slowly accumulate a lot more points in the point hedging 201 section of the book. Um, And then eventually you want a goal of at least 50,000 points per person in, you know, who you're responsible for paying for. Uh, So two people, you want to build up to having, always having at least a hundred thousand points for emergency use. Um, if you've got a family of five, you want uh, 250,000 points for emergency use. Is it, does it mean you can't dip into those? No, but just like you know, a Dave Ramsey emergency fund uh, with cash, you want a Jay Goot emergency fund of points because this does drastically help. I've gone to countless weddings, funerals, conferences, where, you know, the cost was really high, um, really wasn't in the mood to spend that much cash. Mm -hmm. So I dipped into the points. Um, You don't always dip into the points. You want to make sure that you're going to get at least a penny, penny and a half a piece, preferably two cents. But again, points are a lot easier to part with if you weren't planning on dropping, you know, two or three grand on, on a funeral. Uh, and you can replace them a lot easier than you can replace the disposable income that you're typically feeding into a vacation fund. And let me jump ahead. It would tell us what chapter earning multipliers is in. That's what, that's where you would learn how to replace those points pretty quickly, right? Sure. Well, in the book, we, d- we divide it into chase earning multipliers and Amex earning multipliers. So, Ooh, uh, okay. we cover chase in point hedging 201. Uh, we also, and then we cover Amex gets a lot more involved, a lot more complicated in point hedging 301 of the book. Um, and then we intentionally do that uh, to let you let you work with points that are easier to earn, easier to work with, mm-hmm. uh, a lot more beginner friendly, and then grow your way into Amex. Excellent. Um, so I think this is another easy layup. Uh, thought we'd give another savings card away to the first person. And I think it's pretty safe to say we'll see an answer very quickly. Uh, which type of points should you start with? Um, we're looking for a specific type of points, um, not just Chase points. Because remember, Chase has Chase has an, a United card. They have a Southwest card. They have Marriott card. They have all sorts of 
branded cards, but we're not looking for that as the answer. Uh, we're looking for something else. Um, and I think it's pretty safe to say someone has probably answered. Well, we have, so far we're getting a lot of just Chase. So I know you're being, we need to be a lot more specific. Chase, oh, here it is. Boop, hold on. I can't see. Chase, I, of course, Chase, it's at the bottom. Chase Sapphire Preferred. Chase, and then we have, uh, we also have Amex, Sapphire Reserve. And I'll let Brooke tell me which one was the first one to answer. Okay. I'm sure someone did, and, and specifically it's Chase Ultimate Rewards Points. Hold Those on. are flexible points that we have. So um, we do have Chase. You are. There we are. But there you go. Brooke will tell me which one it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's the idea here. Don't fall into the trap of getting a United card or a Southwest card. Um, we talk about that in the book. Um, I like to call that, the, you know, like, it's it's kind of like um, you know having one airline or one hotel. Like all airlines and all hotels have great deals on point redemptions five or ten percent of the time. Delta Sky pesos like five percent of the time. Marriott and Hilton three percent of the time. Um, United seven to ten percent of the time. You can get a great deal with points. The other ninety some percent. You're gonna you're you're gonna lose a ton of points for a not a great redemption value. The Ugh. beauty of flexible points. Oh gosh, it's are you hearing that? I did hear that. Fancy. Yeah, got a little thunderstorm coming. Nice. Um. So the beauty of flexible points is that you can apply them to wherever is giving the best deal. So I've I've flown countless times on Air Canada for less points to fly in first class than what United was charging for coach on the same plane. I still flew on United, but by knowing the rules, by being able to say, well, United, you're not giving me a good deal. I'm going to go with Air Canada. Um, it's kind of like, it's kind of like having a visa gift card for a hundred bucks or 20 different gift cards to 20 different random restaurants around town. A bunch of Applebee's, right? Yep. <laughs> And it Not looks like Donna Jeffrey Apple was there. Applebee's and Chili's and McDonald's and <laughs> Olive Garden and all of that. <laughs> and um, our mother was what, uh, Donna Jeffrey, sorry, for the Chase Apple right. for reward. So thank you, Donna. Yeah, so the, the, the 20 different gift cards, that's what we call card churning. That's our point hacking. That's not what we endorse at Jegu. We talk about getting a couple Visa gift cards that you can spend however you like with whoever is going to give you the best deal. So... Um, you want to start with Chase. They're a piece of cake to transfer to Hyatt and get a great redemption. They're a piece of cake. You're not going to get a great redemption, but they're a piece of get cake. If you need to get your family of five to a funeral, Southwest is very easy to just transfer points. And, you know, they'll go uh, a lot farther than just spending those points in the Chase travel portal. Yeah, look um, at this comment from Katie. Exactly. We don't recommend Capital One in our beginner group. Let's be clear about that. We have a simple strategy. Chase first, master that, then Amex. Speaking of beginner group, let me just plug real quickly. Um, Jay Goot Lounge, I'm just going to throw it out there. We talk about yeah. that for just one second. So guaranteed strategies to travel and luxury for budget prices. So comment interested. I don't know. Are we still doing a discounted rate for our events? For Chase Lounge members? Or for our Jay Goot Lounge uh, yep. members? Yep. Lounge members right. def definitely pay uh, pay far less than, um, than non-lounge members for our live event. Um, so that's, gotcha. that'll be worth several hundred bucks, um, awesome. by being awesome. a lounge member. So, so again, yeah, if we're interested in our coaching program, mm -hmm. our coaching program is a six month program where we take you from zero to 60 and show you not how to just travel for free, but travel for free in business and first class, uh, and to how to get, you know, three hundred, five hundred, twelve hundred dollar a night uh, hotels mm -hmm. for free using points, and how to earn enough points to do that every year. The title of our book: How to Take a Honeymoon Quality Vacation Every Year, and that's pretty much you know what we show you how to do, and that's kind of our minimum guarantee. And uh, you know, a lot of our members do that and take multiple luxury vacations every year with the strategies we teach. And talk so, about what the guarantee is, because we have some big numbers that we we promise in that, that it's kind of crazy. 
Sure. So we have anywhere between a $10,000 and a $250,000 guarantee. Now, if you earn minimum wage and spend you know, $12,000 a year on credit cards, no, you're not going to get a $250,000 guarantee. But we do have a minimum in, of $10,000 in free travel guarantee. Uh, and we have a personal conversation with you. We ask about your pen- spending power. How much, how much points do you have the potential of earning? What points are you bringing to the table? What type of points are they? Because if you've got a bunch of B of A points, we can't do a thing with those. So we don't really, we can't help you. We, we would tell you like, just go spend them. It doesn't matter how, because they're a penny a piece. If you've got a bunch of Chase points, a bunch of Amex old membership rewards points, we can turn a thousand dollars worth of, we can show you how to turn a thousand dollars worth of those points into five, 10, $20,000 worth of luxury travel. Love it. So if you're interested, comment interested, and we'll set up, we have a personal conversation. We want to make sure that we can actually fulfill our guarantee with you um, just as well as like, make sure that you can work with the Jagu rules. Cause if you insist on staying with your B of a card, we can't even help you. We won't invite you into the lounge. Um, if you absolutely love your capital one card, probably can't help you. Yeah. Um, it's, it's an okay card, but not nearly as good as chase ultimate rewards or Amex membership rewards. And at Jegu, we're about making this as simple as possible. And the things that make it hard are doing things that vary from the Jegu way. Exactly. And if you're just now tuning in, of course, you're in Jay Good Village. And as soon as we're done with uh, what the, we're done with this, you'll be able to watch the replay too. And make sure you check out the comments because again, we have a lot of our experts that are here watching live and they're answering questions too. So come on over and actually look at the comments too. And somebody wanted to know, they're really busy this summer. Can they do coaching in October? Yes, you can. Yeah. Um, the only thing we say is, you know, the important thing is like, our guarantee requires that you spend an average of one hour a week learning our material. And that's done through about 20 hours of home study and about five hours of personal time with our coaches. So you kind of check in like once a month with a coach and you look at some home study in between. And it's literally one hour a week of commitment. And what I usually like to tell people is, you know, people think that this is a way bigger commitment than it is. And I mean, you can spend more time in our happy hours with our coaches and so on, but the minimum commitment is about one hour a week. And what I usually like to say is this is like a snowball rolling down a hill. If, if you want to, you know, travel well, you want to get that ball rolling as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of these are just simple steps you put into place so that that snowball starts accumulating and getting bigger. Um, I equate it to a free travel slush fund. The sooner you start feeding that slush fund, the bigger it will be for when you're ready to plan a trip. So if, if, if you're really busy, ask yourself, like, when are you not going to be really busy? This is something (laughs) that you have to make a priority to do. And um, just like my wife and I are making a priority to learn, get better at Spanish and not be clumsy Americans every time we go into restaurants and, fumble with our high school Spanish, you know, you have to kind of immerse yourself. You, you have to commit. And the good news is it's really only a commitment of one or two hours a week. Um, you can certainly spend more if you want to get fluent faster. Um, but I would encourage you to think about that as well. I like it. So the other reason you want to start with chase ultimate rewards, they are the most flexible. They're more flexible then Amex when it comes to options that have good redemption values. Amex, it's pretty hard to get good redemption values with hotels. Chase, piece of cake. Yeah. Piece of cake. And we cover that in Point Hedging 201 section of the book. In fact, we even have a challenge on page 51, 52 of the book, where I just say, here, Here's a challenge to go and get a hundred to two hundred dollar hotel for five thousand points. And if you do so, we will actually give you a hundred dollar travel savings card. Like you just post the results to the group and say, "I just took a staycation." You can do it in your own hometown, and um, like just 
taking that step, just learning how to do that, because 98% of people don't know how to do that, that's making huge leaps forward with learning how to take advantage of the flexibility of those points. Um, Another thing, this a little more 301 strategy is you can get on to over 20 airlines either directly or indirectly through what we call second tier transfer partners. We do not have time to talk about that today. That's actually an advanced topic, but we do go into it in depth in the book. And again, this is why we recommend starting with Chase. Again, do you, do you want a $100 Visa gift card or do you want a $1,000 Visa gift card or do you want... 20 different $50 gift cards that you're forced to use at certain places. Um, Chase Ultimate Rewards is the equivalent of all in one place Visa gift card. Getting United card, Southwest card, Hyatt card, Marriott card, all of that, that's the equivalent of getting a bunch of different gift cards that you're forced to spend in dozens of different places. And again, that sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. Right? Jigua is about simplicity. All you really need is a minimum of two cards, one Chase card that earns ultimate rewards and one Amex card that earns membership rewards. You can get more, but that's kind of the minimum requirement. Mm -hmm. if you want to start to travel this way. Katie's got another great comment. If your question starts with what about and ends with any card except the two we recommend, the answer is get a Chase Sapphire, master it. That's the other big part right there. Master that and then get the Amex. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> and that's, I said this a couple of weeks ago, but yeah, you can buy a sword on eBay, a samurai sword on eBay. It doesn't make you a samurai. You still got to practice. Damn it. And that's exactly what we teach you how to do um, with the Chase card once you get it. And then finally, like with this rule number two, having an emergency stash of points, worst case, and all of us have done this, worst case is you're staring at $2,500 for a funeral that wasn't in the budget that you really don't want to part with. Worst case, you can get 1.25x to 1.5x for those points in the Chase portal. And you can fly with any airline you want, almost any airline we want, and just book it that way. And that's the worst case, but often you can get two, four, seven cents per point. So in other words, instead of cobbling together some points from your Southwest card and your United card and having to fly separately, just so it's not too expensive, you've got chase points. And uh, though a hundred thousand chase points are worth anywhere between $1,500 and $15,000 towards those family emergencies. Gotcha. So I think I've, I've given three easy layups because I gave clues on what, uh, what our three options are. But when all else fails, what other options do you have? So we talked about rule one. And rule one is more about prevention. It's about proactively planning trips around dirt cheap vacations so you can take a ten or $20,000 vacation for a couple grand. That allows you to pad your travel budget so that you have room for travel emergencies. You do the same with points. Um, you plan vacations around good deals. I've done that with dozens of trips. I've gone to Greece. I've gone to Italy. I've gone to Asia. I've flown in a $12,000 first class suite. Uh, on Singapore Airlines, which is like is one of the best airlines in the industry. And I used $500 worth of points. Did I say I want to go to Singapore on these dates and book it with points? No, that would have cost a million points. But by saying this flight on these dates are 50,000 points, I planned around it. I didn't blow a million points on a single flight. Um, and instead I got a $12,000 flight with $500 worth of points. So, up, so that's, up, that's rule number one, um, plan around deals. Rule number two, always have at least 25, preferably 50,000 points per person as a travel emergency. Mira, who is now one of our travel coaches early in her early days of learning to travel the Jigu way kind of said, hey, you know, like we've we've got this trip we want to take, but we only have so much. 
And this was before I knew Mira very well. And I basically said, well, okay, how many people do you have to pay for? All right. You really want 50,000. So you're dipping a little bit into it. Um, but you've got some other, other points on the way. So sure, you'll be fine. And, you know, this is, that's how you want to look at it. You want just that savings buffer of points to prevent those frustrating experiences. And that's your, that's your starter level of points. And then option three, if you don't have points, if you're saving points for a big trip, if you don't have a lot of, you don't want to part with cash for a, a, a cash trip, option three is Hail Mary plays. Marsha Ann is the winner, by the way. Thank you, Marsha Ann. By the way, my mom's name is Marsha Ann. So I'm, I'm feeling an affinity towards you. And she also says right. she just got her Sapphire card. So cool. she's working on building ports and she's put up points. She's changed all of their bill pay to that card now. Go look at you go. Congratulations. Good job. Yeah, well done. Um, so yeah, Hail Mary plays are exactly what they sound like for anyone who doesn't know. Um, I don't address Hail Mary plays in the book because they're, they're, they're separate. The whole idea of the Jigget way of travel is to need Hail Mary plays as, as little as possible. And if you travel the Jigget way and plan the majority of your trips around deals, you don't need Hail Mary plays. These are guaranteed strategies. Um, but if you don't have enough points or whatever, you know, like it's the, the flights are way more expensive than you thought or way more points than you thought. Well, Hail, Hail Mary plays are what you want to resort to. We have three in, um, we have three in our, uh, in our free, in our free group. If you haven't seen them, just comment Hail Mary plays. Um, and one of them is what I call the flea flicker. The <laughs> other is, uh, and it's basically, um, positioning air. Oh, I take that back. That's a more of an advanced one. One of them is called the dating game, <laughs> um, where you, you literally just play with the dates and it's shocking. Like if you just kind of turn on the plus minus feature, um, and I can, I can show that, uh, if you, if you just turn on the plus minus feature, it gives you 49 possible different options. Like, and sometimes you can, you can return a day later and save 70%. Sometimes you can leave a day earlier or take a red eye the night before and save 60%. Now, again, remember, these are, this is, these are desperation plays when you don't have any other options. So pro hopefully you've been putting rules one and two into place. And the more you do that, the less often you'll have to resort to Hail Mary plays. But um, if, you haven't seen, if you haven't seen our Hail Mary play demonstration, comment Hail Mary play. If you haven't seen our bullseye demonstration, that's that's a that's a demonstration of our bullseye training, also known as the dating game. Um, and those are just backup options that you can kind of keep in your back pocket and use in desperate times when you don't have any other options and you're not liking the flight prices that you see. Um, and I forget what else I was going to say about that. Uh, <laughs> we going to name one of the other ones. We had Fleet Flicker, Dating Game. Yeah. Oh, I remember. So yeah, we, we cover three of them in our free training. We have 10 that we regularly resort to and we teach our clients to in our paid coaching program. Um, so, uh, and, and that's, again, it's when you don't like the flight prices, if you don't like the points options, these are all universal principles that you're just going to kind of keep in your back pocket for every time you need to go somewhere and you don't like the prices whether cash or points that you're finding. Excellent. So those are the three different things that you can do to prevent travel emergencies. Um, and basically these are all resources that you can put to use for little to no cost. And then of course the, the, the most, the best way to get the most support. Like if, if our free training library at jgoot.com doesn't float your boat, we've got a book. It is kind of the, the, a whole summary of the Jagoot way of travel, seven bucks. You can do that by going to jagoot.com slash book. And then of course, if you want more personal help, that's what our paid coaching program is for. It's not cheap. It's specifically for people who are, who travel more often than most or want to, and want to do so in business or first class. And we basically teach you how to take 
five, ten, twenty thousand dollar first class flights for a few hundred dollars in taxes. And we teach you how to do that consistently at least once a year. So again, the name of our book, how to take a honeymoon quality vacation every year, and we teach you strategies on how to do that. So it's really a matter of how much support you want. You want to do it yourself? Great. Poke around the free resources on jgoot.com. Um, also our book. Uh, one other thing that's in between here that I didn't list because we want this recording to last a while uh, is our conference. Um, our conference, if you're not ready for our not inexpensive several thousand dollar coaching program, you can attend our conference for a few hundred bucks. And that will get you from one level to the next. It's not going to get you what our six-month program gets, but it will definitely help give you concrete steps to get to the next level of wherever you currently are with your travels. So come at event. We'll send you information on that too. We also call it boot camp, event, conference. We have all kinds of names for it. <laughs> right. Excellent. And then we, uh, yeah, go to jgoot.com forward slash book or comment book. You can just go to jgoot.com and we'll give you a ton of information too. Lots of options. Yeah. Right. Well, we had quite a few comments, but a lot of them, you know, as I mentioned before, our experts are out here answering it too. So if you're watching this in replay, make sure you go and look at this over on jgoot village on Facebook, then you'll see all the answers too. It's a, it's a gold mine. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We're pretty proud of it. Lots of options, depending on, you know, what type of learner you are. You, there's something for everyone. All right. So we have 424 comments. That's a lot. And it's only 47 minutes past the hour. That's quite a bit. <laughs> so you want to do a giveaway and then if, answer any more questions. And I think we're out of here. Sure. Yeah. Well, right. we up any questions that maybe haven't been addressed by our coaches. Um, and then, yeah, let's have a little yeah. drum roll. And yeah, drum roll. And we had 424. So comment for number 301. Psh, you are the winner of right. the travel savings card. Let me pull this up too. Talk about what you get with a travel savings card. Sure. So um, basically it's a, a savings card, not a gift card, um, but it'll save you 20 to 60% off of over a million hotels worldwide. Uh, excursions or activities. Mm -hmm. My wife and I have taken food tours. Um, I took my daughter on a scuba diving tour. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it'll knock 20 to 60% off of the best price you can find on Travelocity, Expedia, and so on, and so on uh, up to a hundred bucks. Awesome. And you can go to jgoot.com for forward slash savings dash card. And since we're early, let's talk about this fun little thing. You know how I love to trot this out the jgoot.com forward slash cal uh, calculator. Can you talk mm. about that real quick? Sure. Um, so this is specifically for, you know, when you're redeeming points, a uh, lot of people say, well, how do I know if it's a good deal? The calculator mm -hmm. will tell you. Um, and we, we've given examples before, like I'm flying back home to Phoenix. I'm paying cash. It wasn't mm -hmm. a good deal. Uh, I, I was only getting the best deal I could find was like 1.6 cents per point. So it's one of those like one in four times where I'm not using points. Why? Because basically, because the calculator told me, don't do it. Right. Um, and this is one of those ways that you stretch those points farther. 98% of the deals out there are terrible deals. Your job is to find the 2% that are phenomenal deals. And the calculator helps you do that by uh, teaching you, when you should spend those points and when you should just pay cash and hold on to them for when you can get 10 or 20 times more for those points. And when you can use it for flights and hotels. Correct. Right. Yep. Yep. And it's really just a matter of like flights, you include the taxes, hotels, right. you don't. So right. And it's super course. judgy when you're not doing a good job. <laughs> it gives you some <laughs> good comments. There's fun okay. little Easter eggs in that too. Uh, so let's see, we have. Oh, let's, let's also just remind people because we get multiple requests a day and those can't be replied to. You have to download a copy for yourself in, in order to use the spreadsheets. And it's right there in yellow text that says to edit this, download a copy. If we just let everyone play with it, it would change in real time and everyone would you know, be changing each other's numbers. So mm -hmm. download a copy for yourself. It's yours to keep and play around with any time you're considering using those valuable points to make sure that you're actually spending them wisely. 
Yep. So a couple more things. Yes, our event is going to be, we can talk about it since we're at the end of the show. It's going to be in early August, right? August 4th? August, technically it's August 5th and 6th. August 4th is just a happy hour meet and greet. That's yeah. a thing. And if you are a member of the, of the lounge or you're thinking about it, we actually have a lounge meetup coming up next weekend in Phoenix. Speaking of Phoenix, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we might break a hundred people. Ah. Um, what happens at those? So meetups are, are literally just what they sound like. They're meetups. They're not necessarily educational. These are our coaching clients who, you know, what we found is most of our clients are the, like they, they're the one or two people in their group of friends who travel a lot. Mm -hmm. And we just love hanging out with each other. So once a quarter, we pick a place. Last quarter, we went to uh, Playa del Carmen. Before that, we were in Miami. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to Phoenix soon. And then, you know, we're, we're doing the conference in Denver. So these are all just places where our travel addicts could hang out with each other and not get judged for traveling to so much. I mean, who here travels a lot and has lots of friends who say, must be nice. Yeah, or, must be nice is a really big common comment, right? Yeah. And that, that's, they're so judgy. Like all of us, we celebrate each other's travels. We help each other travel more. We show each other trip tips and tricks. Mm -hmm. We share those crazy 10 and 20 cent redemptions when we find them. And we don't share those with a 50,000 person Facebook group. And we also share said things that don't work, right? Yep. Well, we tried this and it didn't work. So, and again, that's part of the lounge. So just comment interested. And if you do get signed up, then you're going to get a discount for the event in August. And I think, yeah, that's them. Must be nice. Me stay jealous or learn. <laughs> Carrie, thank you. Yep. So what yes. what's the Jim Rohn quote? Don't, don't wish. I don't know. This is your, I'm going to mess it up. Um, <laughs> come back and comment it after. <laughs> it's something along the lines of don't wish to be rich, wish to get better. Oh, I like um, that one too. See yeah. wait for the Easter egg as well. So yes, uh, we did mention this meetup, but that is for lounge members only. So join up and you can come and see us this weekend too, if you're in Phoenix. And that is, yeah, that is strictly members. Cause I mean, we have to, we have to reserve space at a restaurant. This is like planning a wedding. Mm -hmm. Um, and every meetup gets more and more popular. And these are, you know, these are, uh, these are just benefits of being members in J. Good Lounge. Anthony, thank you for that. Don't wish it was better. Yeah, thank you. Wish you were better. <laughs> that sounds or also, I don't wish, it you wish you were better. Don't wish for fewer problems. Wish for more skills. Ooh, I like that little add-on, yeah, Gary. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, all right, y'all, we'll be here next week. Not sure what we're talking about yet, but we'll be here next Monday. I think that's it, right? Until then, say it. Yeah. Happy travels. Happy travels, everyone. Bye.